Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm really excited today because I have got somebody very cool with me. I've got two people very cool with me. I've got Rhiannon from Riding with Rhi here today. She has come to spend the day with us and is lovely. We're just chatting horses and having a lovely time together. And then I've also got my friend Hayley from the blog of Bronte. You may follow her on Instagram. She has a horse that is very similar to Blondie. She had a horse that was very similar to Blondie. Unfortunately, she recently had to be put to sleep, which is very, very sad. And me and Hayley have spoken a lot and um, I reached out to Hayley and asked for some support and she has actually come down to meet Blondie today and we are going to be talking all about positive reinforcement. So our positive training where you are asking a question of a horse and then they are receiving a physical reward in food or a physical touch in return. Um, I found this way of training to be really helpful with Blondie. I don't know a huge amount about it. It's not something that I have endeavoured to do previously, but Blondie has called for an alternative approach over and over again. So I wanted to seek some professional help. Haley has, has Haley retrained Bronte in this way and had amazing results with all sorts of different responses that uh, Bronte had had. She was quite traumatised and she had been um, neglected, I think, before she had her. I may be corrected, but I'm pretty sure that that is the case. And so um, what we're going to do today is Haley is going to show me more correctly how to get started with positive reinforcement training with Blondie. Um, we've got some questions with Blondie at the moment. So for example, I want her to see the vet and there is a certain amount of needing for consent from Blondie for that. And this is something that we're gonna talk about today is how we can get Blondie to actually feel like she can say yes to treatment from the vet. She's gonna have her front feet x-rayed next week and we've done some practicing with uh, like a piece of cardboard on a stick so that we can like put it between her legs and move around her and um, hopefully we're gonna be able to make a positive experience out of the vet coming but it's difficult because when I've tried to use food reinforcement with Blondie before she can be a little bit too pushy and I think that's what we're going to talk about a lot about today is how to create that boundary and create an actual like a positive association in a clear way rather than it just oh I get some food and I'm distracted so anyway let's go and um let's go and get started I'm really excited so this is Hayley so hi Hayley and I've got a bum bag on looking more professional yes I've got my bum bag with uh these are low value right yes because yeah. they're like fiber nuggets they come in a big bag we buy like a big sack of them yeah. and I've had the right stuff but I don't want to do it yeah so it's going to help just... improve the tools that you've got absolutely yeah. you just asked me what is there specifically yeah so a few things so Blondie is very like the way she eats a treat okay. is quite problematic right. because if you're not careful, she would take your entire hand. Okay. Uh, and then next up is we have this vet visit next week and right. I would like for her to have, to be able to stand okay. and understand that I can positively reinforce what she's doing, yeah. but without her like coming to me for, for it as such, yeah. 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 So she, what the plan is, look, we've got this, we've been practicing. This is our x-ray board. <laughs> I love it. So yeah. we've been like putting that out between her legs yeah. and having her just in the barn. And that's mm -hmm. my plan when the vet comes is to okay. just have it in the barn. But I'm just mindful that she has this big no to things. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to find a way that I can help her feel like if she starts to have some boundaries in her own space, that then she's going to be reinforced for that. Yeah. But without her like mugging me, yeah. basically, which is what I found her do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So like with the farrier, for example, mm -hmm. I cross tie her here because yeah. that makes him feel safer. Yeah. And then I stand in front of her, but I'm not able to like, there's no boundary. I'm just essentially just, just placating her. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. That's where we're at. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So are there, is there any key points that I need to do before we start? Um, not necessarily just making sure that you have, you know, you've, You've got the idea in mind, your realistic expectations. Yeah. It's good that you've started now, mm -hmm. but if even if you know this vet visit doesn't necessarily go to plan as such, as long as it's not like a last and negative association, yeah. then just continue building on that for she needs follow up x rays, yeah. you know, and making the farrier visit, you know, more calm and less yeah. coming to you for guidance. So yeah, just starting with 
boundaries because she's if she's never done it before yeah. and she's still in, unsure in her body she's going to just be confused as to you know what mm. things mean so there's a lot to go over especially with the bridge and how long you've got from yeah yeah so i've been making up one noise but yeah. i don't think it's quite clear enough that's yeah. what one person said to me mm -hmm. online so i've been making a sound yeah which felt quite like a good sound to yeah. me because it was soft yeah but maybe that's not quite right yeah so if, can you explain to her what a, what a bridge is? Yes, so a bridge is the signal between doing the correct behaviour and the reward. So if you're asking your horse to back up and they take one step back, is the bridge that I use. And then you've got three seconds to give the reward so the horse understands what you're reinforcing. Mm -hmm. If you don't use a bridge or if your bridge is mixed or too long, you could be reinforcing the wrong part of the behaviour that you're asking for. I see. So with positive reinforcement, there's a lot of misconceptions about it. People sort of have issues where the horse is mugging, but often the value of the reward is too high. Um, you know, they're not teaching the essentials first and they're not using a bridge. So mm. the horse is naturally going to come because, you know, foraging animals, they're going to wonder what's happening. But if you start correctly, then she'll have these boundaries as such of, yeah. okay, I know where I put the... So this is why people use a clicker. Yeah because then you have the physical sound. Yes, and it stays the same all the time. Mm. However, obviously, if you're out and about and you don't have a clicker on you, or if you're riding, that's why people use the tongue pop. Um, but sometimes with some horses that have, say, sensory issues, maybe like Blondie, mm. uh, like a mechanical clicker can be too alarming. Yeah. Which is why a lot of people do go for the tongue pop. But even if you wanted to just go with yes, good, just as long as it's quick and it just stays the same. Okay, I like good. Yeah, good. I say good a lot naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I watched the video, I seen you were saying good, and then you would give you bridge because it's obviously just automatic behaviour. Because I don't you. know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Yes. Um. So yeah, even if you did want to just stick with good. Okay. Reward. Good. Reward. And then that obviously stays the same. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think good as well for me is it's clear in my brain. Yeah. For me, exactly. Like, yeah. You're not having to push something no. out. Yeah. No, because I think because I make sounds all the time yeah. for forward motion yeah. or for like a something physical that maybe is why that hasn't come so naturally to me yeah. to yeah. make her. Some people actually can't do it as well with their tongues. So. Oh, I can make weird noises with my yeah. tongue. <laughs> okay, well let's try that. Yes. So we'll go head collar because we're not going to need to be, and we're going to go to the arena, are we? Yeah, that works. Yeah. Yeah. Because actually also you might see that sometimes she can be a bit hesitant. Yeah. And I think that sometimes this comes, so this might be interesting because we may see a moment here. Hi, darling. And you have the pouch as well, so it'll be interesting to see if she just goes straight to that, which she probably will. Stand up. Hello. See, this is sometimes what we get still. Oh, yeah, I see. And is that when she sees the head collar? Yeah, more so okay. than anything else. And what I tend to do is ask her to come forward. And then, but there, see today. Yeah, she, yeah. Come on, not too much expectation. You can come out. Come on. Come on. Yeah. No, not today? Yeah. Mm, okay. Very interesting today. Interesting. Today. Do you find that she has any issues with resource garden? Um, with I haven't. Or no, no, I haven't done. It does tend to be more so. Yes. Good. There we go. I said the right thing at the right moment there. So can you touch it? Good. Yeah. So that is essentially almost like a start button. Mm -hmm and she doesn't want to touch it, then I would just, yeah, honour that. Good. Yeah. Because it's hard because once, generally once the head collar is on and she knows that something negative, she doesn't know what we're going to do today, that's why. Interesting that she's brought this back out. We yeah. haven't had this. And she's been funny this week, actually. Okay. There have been a few times when I definitely felt like she wasn't really feeling herself. Right. Like, just like a bit more, since we saw the vet, actually. Okay. I know you know where it is. <clears throat> You've got to touch this. Good. Yeah. So then as soon as she does touch it or take a step in the right direction, I would be given the bridge and the reward. So yeah. it's so then you know she's she's understanding. Good. It's nearly the right 
thing. Bell's well, I'll put my head in there. <laughs> but an interesting one to, to work on for her could potentially be the self holtering where you just present the head collar and she will put her head in. Yeah. And then I guess one day she didn't want to do it, you've got a clear no of, okay, well, something's maybe going on, something's happened, she doesn't feel good in her body to wear. <clears throat> there I feel like I'm going to her too much yeah even if you do have to physically guide her and, sh and show her what it is that you need it's better good yeah and even if you want to try and just ask and put a head collar on as if you normally wouldn't see what reaction you get when you do that how do you mean so you know just go to put a nose into the head collar and see how she'd re react if she feels ready now. No, she says no. no thank you. And that's fine. Just give us. So space. what I have done in the past when I worked with this other guy is we did some work with creating a bit of a softening, yeah. like through her neck, yeah, with just a rope, mm -hmm. and that actually was really really helpful for her in like bridging the gap between yeah. the two. Because it's almost like once she's with you then it's slightly different mm -hmm. for her. Yeah. So just that movement, just that putting the rope round. Yeah. Good. Sorry, I was really fucking slow. And I just swore. <laughs> Very good. Should I take it off and put it back on? I would personally just leave it. Okay. Yeah. So she's got clear communication of, you know. Job. That was the right thing to do. We're going to go do some little walking around now together. <laughs> go with me. Right. That was a big thing for her. Like, going with me to the arena was a really, like, nerve-wracking thing. Yeah. And she was like, you know, she would just park and stop. stop. So there might be a chance, actually, between now and getting to the arena where we do some more yeah. work. <laughs> I'm honoured that you think that I look like a vet. Maybe your coat is quite that light. Yeah. Girl. Yeah. It, it's interesting when they do, you know, because a lot of people think horses as fight off uh, flight. Yeah. So, you know, that they'll just bolt off, but actually they freeze as well when it's too much. Yeah. So if she does just stand and there's no sort of, you know, that's obviously she doesn't really feel secure or, you know, confident. I do a lot of letting her process things. Yeah, that's when good. she first no 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 like it fell well honestly yeah. come on Missy. come on when she first came we just I realised that she no one had ever let her explore things yeah so like we walked past something scary there's stuff behind us isn't there yeah and that was that was Warwick that yeah. He does that. You lean into the pressure mm -hmm. and then you point at the leg you want to move, okay. which is the nearest hind leg. Yeah. And that was really good for her because it was like the wheels, had, the, the handbrake had stopped moving. Yeah. And then that was just what kind of started the body moving yeah. again. So there have been things that I have taken from so many different, different approaches. Yeah, same. And put them into one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's really what I find, I'm finding with her is how I would train a horse. Yeah. Like it doesn't really do the trick here. Yeah. You know, there are things that she needs to learn that aren't what other horses need to learn. There are yeah. gaps that she needs having filled that other horses don't. Yeah. That's what I'm finding so, so interesting. So what, in, in terms of like a, a normal session, yeah. what would you like aim to do in this session with her today? Um, it's difficult really because obviously we don't want to push, push past the uh, threshold. You know, we want her to be comfortable. Yeah. Um, but obviously I know that in your mind, the vet visit, you know, is important mm -hmm. because that could be the next step of the journey, you know, could just be that she does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you may need to do the vet visit to this get further. Maybe I should have put a robot Yeah. Do you want me to shut the arena gate? Yeah, we will push that too, yeah. I was just going to say. Which is also because I think maybe your mum is coming down. Okay. But, well, she thinks they are. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely should have put a rope on. 
So like sound in the distance for her is quite difficult. Yeah. Hey. I really don't feel like I've got the right piece of equipment on her head to help her in any moment now because there are things now that I would do. Yeah, to help. To help her feel less. Yeah. Yeah, because um, she seemingly has quite a small threshold that you do. Yeah. And give just... her a little bit of, give her some guidance. Yeah. Yeah. Instant calm. Instant gratification there, madam. She'll do it like you take her to the mountain block to present to the mountain block, and she's like, Would you like me to put my foot Yeah, on she'll that? just chuck everything at you. Yeah, yeah literally. It's funny as well, the head collar, I think, because uh, you know, if we were just doing some stuff like walking and stopping and that kind of thing, when she throws big energy at me, yeah, I think to myself, Yeah, I don't actually want a head collar that jangles, like, even just the rattling of it, it feels like too much, too much for her. Yeah. Because like the stillness of a rope halter with no clip is like nothing else. It's very else. different, isn't it? Yeah. And then we're with, now she feels like she's with me again. Yeah. So as we were saying earlier when we weren't recording yeah. about you having a balance of both that you'll yes. be training with both negative and positive reinforcement yeah so that's a really interesting thing to mention isn't it yeah so positive reinforcement the giving of something yeah but negative reinforcement is just the subtraction of the question yeah so like negative reinforcement in the most blat blatant way is here i'm asking a question i'm saying can you move your body around me she shows a desired behavior of being soft and relaxed i stop asking that is negative. It should be called subtractive, I think. Yeah. Because negative is has a bad connotation. Yeah, there's a lot of people who do take that the, the wrong way. But yeah, it is the subtraction of the question. Yeah. <laughs> Again, and we all do. We all go our whole lives with negative reinforcement. Yeah. Like when you ask your horse to trot, yeah. from walk to trot, leg goes on, and then question, off, yeah. and then off, negative reinforcement. But because otherwise, if every time your horse did the right thing, and you and see that is a question I definitely have. If you were riding, yeah, and you wanted to use positive reinforcement, because mm -hmm. I remember you talking about how that's what you had planned. Yes, that was your that next was the aim. Yeah. your next step. How would you do that? How would you start to create positive reinforcement under saddle? Yeah. So my plan was to have everything on the ground solid, which we we were like there. Yeah and then to incorporate it under saddle in small bits. I was gonna do a shaping plan. So shaping is um, sort of breaking everything down into small steps and rewarding the horse for every step they take in the right direction. Mm. So I was gonna create a shaping plan where it would be, so there, was, there would still need to be pressure, you okay. know, to ask her to go forward, but also reinforcing with the reward, which you can do under saddle, but it wouldn't be um, sort of, instant so you know i wouldn't ask her to trot and then put a treat round in front of her she would have to come back so that's why we would have to do a shaping plan to make it all really okay, small fine and then th that's the misconception as well people say well what do you do when you don't have treats but you know you'll be using more treats in the early days when you're reinforcing and you're creating that behavior yeah but then towards the end you won't need them as much you know because it'll be at the end of a pattern rather than every single step in the right direction yeah okay what what do you think about use doing some training with something that she already knows how to do yeah but using positive, positive rim in the right way yeah so for example the stretching wall yeah favorite thing to do yeah so maybe we could should would that be a good yeah, thing that to would do be a good so start. that we can yeah. we can do it so together. you're still you're not sort of completely changing our pattern because that'll be something you know even if you do want to do that you'd have to do all the time yes um but what we could do is a nice start so she understands is her regular patterns but rather than the release of pressure the reward yeah so she can put two and two together that way yeah another thing that would be really interesting is her want to walk over a pole okay. is quite that's quite stuck for her still right i don't think she has a particularly positive association with that would that be something that you would you could use yes. so like 
she's jumped before, yeah. but she, every time, whenever she jumps, she jumps, she's too fast. Yeah. So that's quite interesting for me that she has obviously, you know, people are like, oh, my horse runs to the jump because he loves it. No, yeah. he wants to get it over with. Yeah. Because well, he, if he doesn't, he thinks he might, the wrong thing might happen. Yeah. yeah. So I do think that possibly that is a bit what we deal with with her and maybe yeah. that would be something that we could discuss about how I could create a positive for that yeah. from the ground. Yeah, absolutely. She says this is fantastic. All this talking. Yeah, get I just get scratches. <laughs> All the scratches. I'm surprised she hasn't rolled actually. She normally gets down and rolls. So when I was watching your video on this as well with Dee Dee, how she needed Good. help, the, what you were doing, you know how you were lifting her leg because she needed a little bit of guidance? Good. Yeah. That is called moulding. So you're essentially physically showing them. Yeah. Good. So what I tend to do with this, mm -hmm. good, is, good, is I reward more for the, the rest. The rest, okay. Than yeah. the like the poem. Savage. Yeah. So as soon as it is that still moment, that's yeah. what we're rewarding. Yeah. We don't want to do any miscommunication where she thinks, okay, I just want to, you want Good. me to hammer this. Yes. That's better, yeah. This is so much better with the, the, the mouthiness. That's like, good. Before, and then she realises how nice it is to stretch. Yeah, she's taking her time more and you seem like you can get in a better position quickly. Yeah, this is really helpful because it's straight in, not uh, yeah. in your pocket, yeah. out of your pocket, give it to her. Is that nice? Good job. So now we come away. So I, yeah, that's kind of been my process. I go and I wait, I give the reward when the slowness comes because like you like you see when you go to ask her backwards and she's like would you like this yeah every time she's like trying to do the right thing yeah so i feel a bit like okay this is i'm starting to understand the process better now yeah. so if we were to then use this for something that she doesn't feel good about yeah good yeah. much better Karma. Everyone is karma. Yeah, I was going to say including, from both sides. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Nice up there. It's a big bendy old shoulder you've got. Other leg. Good. Nope. Good. Yeah. See there? There, the mouth is like really open and yeah. like my whole hand went in her mouth. Yeah. Any, any suggestions when this is the case? I don't know if that would be on her side if it's when she's getting overexcited or maybe sort of over frustrated. Good. So it might even be to take more regular breaks. You know how you sort of take one away and present again. Okay. So even if you just ask Do once less. and she gives you exactly what you want, just go away, have a break. Right. Come back and because we were just talking that she has a small threshold as well. Yeah. So in our mind. We always say, oh, we'll do it again, we'll just do it again one more time. And then sometimes they get frustrated or the communication doesn't flow as good. Okay, so then I should go once more, yeah. ask this more calmly, yeah. get one question, as, yeah. come away, mm -hmm. and then... As soon as she does, you know, it's nice and calm, she's in a nice place, you are. She hasn't taken your whole hand away, she's had the reward. I would go away from it. Okay. Yeah. And we'll maybe, do you think we should do... Yeah, we'll talk about what we can maybe... Yeah. What else we can maybe do... Oh, good. Such a now. Are it's you the important as well for people that are watching, like horses have a really short attention span. Mm. Their attention span is 11.8 seconds long, I think. Yeah. So a training session really should be like five to 20 minutes, like in the early days, even shorter than that. But it is really hard to good. not get carried away of, you know, you want the behavior one more time, one more time. So with Blondie, we're just gonna get exactly what we want and leave that at that. Good job. Yeah, she's like, I'm not, I just want to keep doing yeah, it. Yeah, but that's my fault. Yeah. I've done that. 
because I I would say, oh, let's we're good at this. Yeah. Let's do this. Really good. What we were talking about is actually that the reality is that that is enough of a trigger for her. If I had a piece of material, yeah, I was doing it yesterday with uh, like a bandage wrap. Yeah. And we could maybe do some of this up at the barn because mm -hmm. I haven't got something down here. But that actually something put passing over, over yeah. is enough of a trigger for her. And that might be really interesting actually mm -hmm. to do some work with that yeah. because yeah, yeah, that would feel definitely like a very productive thing to yeah. use with your guidance. Yeah. Because it was, you know, even yesterday when she was on the yard and I had the thing, just me doing this, the ear was on me straight away and I was stopping and like this. And yeah. that's what Hannah was saying. She was like, how far back do you go yeah. to find where the trigger, the trigger is? is? Yeah, definitely. That's the important thing because we don't want to just um, have her, you know, do the behavior. We obviously want to find the triggers and yeah. we want her to be comfortable where she can say yes or no. Because yeah. if she feels like she can say no, then she doesn't have to get really reactive mm. or like over that threshold. Yeah. That's a really important thing. A lot of people wait until it gets really reactive where even just the swish of her tail to Blondie is a no. You know, she's not comfortable with that. Yeah. But then it makes her yeses really obvious as to what she is comfortable with. don't have to have all the tack out straight away no well i might be able to even yeah. just do that here and this and is... it might be better to do it in the arena yeah. where we have a little bit more focus there's less going on than up on up on the yard yeah possibly so when i start with something new for them i always draw them to it yeah i always allow them to come and touch things so maybe this is where we so what i i'll tell you my process that i would go through is I would have it, take them to it, let them touch it, take it away, yeah. and then go to the side and then take it a bit to touch her with it. And yeah. then when she gives me, says no, yeah. I would see that and re retract. Yeah. So where in that would I positively reinforce? So, because this is what I mean about the yeah, crossover. For, for the, yeah, so where you would find that you were wanting to release that pressure, would be when you were wanting to put the reward in because that's what we want to reinforce but what if you're getting a negative reaction to yeah. the thing then i would just take a step back give her the space because then as we say we okay. don't want to have her to have to escalate that no so if she's saying no honor that no take a step back yeah give her some time to see if there is a trigger is the people on the yard the dogs barking is it maybe the position that you're at and yeah. then ask again and you know if you do keep getting the frequent no's and there's something somewhere that she isn't comfortable with yeah so whilst most people might not notice that she swished her tail she had a look at you yeah, the side eye was strong and the, yeah there's a lot of tension above that eye so yeah. this is always often where you see it, for see it her. yeah and and when she's soft and she's happy it softens out mm -hmm. like when i scratch her mm -hmm. you know the face comes a bit looser and then if I go to then, yeah. So that's her way of saying no. Yeah. But if you were to not honour that and you were to keep pushing, as we all have done before in the past, probably that's when things do start to get you know more reactive. The cow kicking comes out. You know she might turn to you to try and defend herself. So I need to, it's quite cl it's clever. You have to be very good with timing. Oh yeah, it, it's it, a it, lot it, like about timing. It rewires your brain as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So if she wants to touch it, how are like we were talking a little bit on WhatsApp, mm. weren't we, about start buttons, and that's a way that's for Blondie. That's really good. Yeah. Okay, fine. So that's a way for Blondie to say, "I'm ready to go." If she doesn't touch it, then she, you know she isn't ready. So when you do that, the first stages of that would be her touching the um, whatever it is that you were going to be putting on her. Yeah. It's really good. 
it's sometimes you do actually need to take a step back and even write things down Good. write down step by step and then you've got it all mapped out in your mind and visually as well waiting for her to not be chewing is really interesting like stopping and actually going slow enough yeah. i do have dog treats but you can't have them <laughs> and making sure she's in a neutral position Good. as well that's another thing you can train is so what i did with b is i trained head away so when we stood side by side mm. she would put her head away and then she would get the reward because obviously with her being a rescue and emaciated her thing was like crazy mugging and i even noticed my cell phone not having um going in a pocket and using a pouch yeah helped so much with that mm. food aggression that she had so could i maybe even reward here that she touches it but then when good yeah then she's you know, when she comes away, away from, from it, it yeah. again yeah that's not me that's a fly yeah <laughs> it's hard huh me and you we're learning we're doing all the learnings She's like, you're an idiot. <laughs> that's why I feel like you look at me sometimes. I'm trying. But that's really interesting about breaking it down. Yeah. And and notice, you know, like molding. So yeah. doing it for her a little a bit. Her, yeah. And then making sure that you can train her to touch it and take herself away. Yeah. And it's just that when they do the thing you are desiring, that then you have something very clear that then you can reward for with rather than rather than it being kind of gray yeah it's very black and white yeah she's certainly um she's a very good teacher yeah because she's so obvious yeah any person watching this video today yeah. will be like oh yeah i could see when she said no yeah and actually, I think that she's going to be, she's she's taught so many people already. You know, I've had yeah. messages, people saying, oh, I see little things in her that my horse does. Yeah. I didn't realise they were saying no. Yeah. It stopped me getting bucked off. It yeah, stopped exactly. me whatever, because actually it's those little things where they're like, mm, not sure. Yeah. Mm, not sure. And if we just keep going, then horses go, I said I wasn't sure. Yeah. And then people are like, he bucked me off out of nowhere. For no reason, yeah. Well, it wasn't. Yeah. He, he He's actually been telling you for a long time. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Oh, oh, then she stopped at the jump. Well, then, you know, yeah. then she tried to kill the vet, you know, <laughs> whatever it, whatever it might yeah. be. But to me, that's really positive because she came in here, she was really worried. Yes. She was really reactive. There yes. was bits that we didn't get on video, no, but she was jumping, nobody... like she just didn't know what to no. do. But she's come back to a good place and there's a plan going forward yeah i got so much learning to do <laughs> i love it and i don't you know you could say that someone else in my position you know i train horses for a living i don't often train horses like blondie for a living yeah that's what i want to say you know this yes. is an extreme case and this yes. is why i'm now seeing this as i have an opportunity here yeah, to exactly. learn more mm -hmm. and you know the the Joe Public as such, I hope, doesn't have a horse that when you stand at their side and you lift your jacket up, they swing their ears at yeah. you. But if you do, then this will be interesting. But if you don't and your horse is just standard, you know, there are little things that you notice that they are not so sure about, this kind of way of being is then transferable. This yeah. is just like an extreme... An extreme case, yeah. yeah. And that's why you may have to break it down into smaller steps. Other horses straight away might have been like, right, okay, I touch that, I get the reward, I know what you want. Where Blondie's still very much like, I'm not really sure. Yeah. I don't really know what to do. I don't really yeah. know how I feel. Do I say yes or no? But it's important to, to honor the yeses and the noes because then you. And it, it you might can be interesting for feeling. me actually to do some training for my with my four year old, for example. Not today, but like another day to say, okay, what can we what similarities or differences do yeah. i see what can i learn from a horse that doesn't have trauma or yeah. hasn't spent a life with pssm and nobody knew that made her body hurt what can i learn from that horse to then take to blondie and what can i learn from blondie yeah. to then take to that horse it would be really interesting to get two horses like it, as you say one that's had a good start and you'll be able to see probably how much quicker the other horse would understand what mm. you are asking. Mm. But it does say a lot like you now will probably go away and you'll have a lot of reflection to do on your communication. Yeah. Because you don't realize if you don't train this way. No, no, not at all. Right, I think we're running out of, oh, we might have a roll. That would be nice. But yeah, do what you like to, do. to me, I would say that that's a good ending. I wouldn't do want to do no more with that. No, absolutely. You know, if you have a negative association with a pole, we then don't want to make that negative. No, and the fact that she now does this 
for me is really really good because she's been rolling in the arena her coat's changing and she's all itchy and horrid but only when there's another horse yeah so she but feels safe enough she to go feels down. safe enough she to does roll. even enough to have a little moment have a little moment oh i dropped the rope Oh. No, that is good because she come in quite anxious, quite guarded. So at the end, even if it just because she's itchy, she still feels safe enough to go down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I used to. I couldn't be down here on my own to start with. Yeah. She couldn't do it. But Ralph's rolling too in the field now. Is it her left shoulder? No, that's Dee Dee. Oh, sorry. That one's not lame. Don't tell me that one's lame. No, sorry. I just. <laughs> no. No, that's the Indy over, Indy's over the road. Yeah, her left shoulder is just trotting, but I think I'm just paranoid. Yeah, for sure. Don't worry. You can make any horse lean if you look at it for longer. Exactly. Long yeah, that's that's like me. I'm um, like hyper fixating on everything now. Yeah, for sure. It's that, really. I can't get my head around the way hocks move, like normally. Yeah. Because I just look at them all and think. It looks wrong. Yeah, no. Do you know what I mean? So Blondie has been out in the field all day. Now she's back in having a little snoozy time. On, do you? Um, really, really interesting with Haley and learning a lot about it. I actually need to get going. I'm going out somewhere, but um, so interesting to learn, like actually the breakdown of the process and how I can break things down even smaller. And learning about being so so much more patient and asking much smaller questions. That was really, really interesting. So, like with the work with my gilet, working as a you know as a piece of material to put over her back like a saddle pad which she has real um negative connotations to just breaking it down in that way was so interesting to really understand where blondie's comfort zone was i will continue to share this process i'm just going out in the horse box um i will continue to share this process and i will this is a bad bit of video isn't it and i will continue to take you guys along but i hope you found that interesting and maybe it will encourage you to do a little bit of different training with your horses i think positive reinforcement is something that we all do without even knowing um so yeah give it a go and let me know how you get on and uh i hope you enjoyed this video see you soon guys bye for now